We have had two decades and more of whining from members of the Muslim community about their sacred places and sacred ideas. We have learned that you can't write novels if it offends uh, um, any Muslim. Uh, you can't draw a cartoon if it offends any Muslim. Uh, you can't publish a book or make a speech to this if it offends any Muslim. OK, we've had decades of this now. Some of us are completely bored of it and think that in any case it was a con trick all along. Here's the thing. OK, here's the deal. We have sacred places too. Hello, welcome to my YouTube channel. Hope you are feeling good. Today we are here again with another video from Douglas Murray titled Douglas Murray Slam Muslim Protesters. Wow, I believe this is going to be another interesting one. Let's check it out. Go. Douglas Murray is in take no prisoners mode once again. This time around, he rips apart Islam like you've never seen before. You think you can prod us and insult us by marching on those days with your hate and your anti-Semitism and your anti-British sentiment? No, no, OK, we played fair and they're not. The people doing the Million Man March are not playing fair at all. Now, before he got into all of that, Douglas kicks off this interview by throwing his support behind then Home Secretary Suella Braverman who had criticised the Met Police for allowing pro-Palestinian protests to go on in the UK. I can't quite understand the treatment of Swella Braverman in the UK. It's extraordinary to me. Uh, she uses perfectly sensible, reasonable language to describe incredibly unsensible and unreasonable people and is forever defamed by people as if she is spouting the most unbelievable far-right ring rhetoric. I mean, the, the criticism of her is endless. It's weird because, I mean, it's the same thing was done against Priti Patel in recent years when she was Home Secretary. It's a very strange treatment. I couldn't agree more with Douglas that the treatment of both women was very strange. It's as if anyone who is Home Secretary and actually has the interests of the British people at heart is in some way doing something unforgivable. Back to Douglas, who is understandably infuriated. The Metropolitan Police is meant to protect the British public. And what happens time after time, whether it's Extinction Rebellion end time eco-cult lunatics or Hamas on the streets of the UK, the Metropolitan Police seem to let them get away with it. I mean, you know, we just had one of our great national treasures, the Rokli Venus of Velazquez in the National Gallery, once again attacked, this time by two young maniacs with hammers who smashed into this unbelievably important masterpiece with hammers. Pretty shocking, isn't it? Now, what's even more shocking is these maniacs weren't punished for it. And, you know, they get away with it. They, they almost certainly get away with it because the last couple of people who did that ended up at getting a 500 quid fine for gluing themselves to a Van Gogh. This is a very shorthand example of what's happening in the UK at the moment. There's this weird standard on policing and absolutely the Home Secretary is right to call it out. Back to Douglas in a sec. Suella clearly understands that the tail is wagging the dog. If it were a march by the English Defence League, it would be stopped. Governments in the West are already running scared of Islamists having sold their populations down the river. Suella represents the majority view, but because the majority are largely silent, the tail gets to wag the dog. But enough is enough. If, if, if you or I, Julia, or anyone else was to go onto the streets and call for the murder of any minority group, we would be arrested, we would be um, fined, we would be charged, we would be, we'd be bundled into the back of a police van. Well, as it happens, it wouldn't have occurred to either of us to do so. Now, pay attention to this part. But why is it that week after week there are people on the streets of Britain calling for jihad? There are, and there's, I, I send these out online all the time, there's sermon after sermon at mosque after mosque across the UK calling for jihad in the UK, for, calling for the extermination of the Jewish state, calling for the downfall of Britain. None of these people get their collars felt by the Met or, the, or, 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 or any of the other police forces. Why, indeed, the double standard is just so appalling. We pay the police to do a job, not to cower and look the other way while those promoting terrorism are having a field day. Why is it that when people on the streets of London call for jihad, 
that we end up with the Metropolitan Police issuing a statement saying that their crack Quran interpretation squads at Central Met HQ have come up with the brilliant idea that saying jihad means a lot of different things, according to them. According to Inspector Plod, um, a big bearded fella shouting jihad, jihad, slay the infidels on the streets of London. Uh, it no, could be uh, saying that he's about to have an inner spiritual struggle with the precise nature of the deity. <laughs> I mean, come can... on, this is, Met this Police. is the mad come territory on. we are in. It's really unfortunate that too many Muslims have imported their hatred into the UK. And there are too many uneducated idiots who were born here who have only just enough brain cells to stand in a group of protesters. We don't need this hatred in the UK. If you need to hate, go to another country and enjoy yourselves. That said, now watch Douglas Murray tear into Muslims, and he doesn't hold back. We have had two decades and more of whining from members of the Muslim community about their sacred places and sacred ideas. We have learned that you can't write novels if it offends uh, um, any Muslim. Uh, you can't draw a cartoon if it offends any Muslim. Uh, you can't publish a book or make a speech to this if it offends any Muslim. OK, we've had decades of this now. Some of us are completely bored of it and think that in any case it was a con trick all along. He goes on to say this, and I need you to pay attention here. Here's the thing. Okay, here's the deal. We have sacred places too. We have sacred places too. One of them is the Cenotaph. One is Remembrance Day. One is when we remember the fallen of two world wars. Those are our sacred places. And you think you can trample on them? You think you can prod us and insult us by marching on those days with your hate and your anti-Semitism and your anti-British sentiment? No, no, okay. We played fair and they're not. The people doing the Million Man March are not playing fair at all. Douglas is dead right. Men died to give us the freedom we have now. And on the day we have chosen to pay respects to them, we have stupid people exploiting it with an outrageous protest on behalf of extremists and terrorists. It's massively disrespectful and shows how much hate there is from that section of society towards British culture and values. These protests have two types of people attending anti-Jew, anti-Western culture, terrorist sympathisers, and those showing naivete. I mean, they are shouting free Palestine, as Palestine itself is some thriving beacon of democracy and freedom. But we all know the country is anything but democratic. If the British police will not protect, then it is up to somebody else. And it looks to me very much like the British public have realised that the Met Police and others recognised, and one of them said this on camera last week, that they're outnumbered yes. at the anti-Israel protest. They're outnumbered. They don't know what to do, Julia. They're scared. They're terrified. Some of them, you can see it in the faces of the older cops, are pissed as hell that they are having to put up with this as young thugs scream insults in their face and taunt them. They don't look like they're enjoying this yeah. one bit. The fact everyone in government and the police is allowing this to go on and claiming we have no way of stopping them just shows the dishonesty of our government. They always have the power to stop protests they don't like. If the Met don't look after the public and our monuments and sacred places, then it falls to the public to do so. And they might include people that you and I would not like, Julia. But this is what happens when law and order breaks down. This is what happens when the police will not police. This is what happens when the police allow people to call for the murder of people on British streets if they happen to be Muslim people doing the chanting and would be round at your house in a nanosecond if you happened to be an autistic girl, for instance, who had said that a particular lesbian looking cop looked but like their lesbian nana. Now, that's quite interesting, isn't it? You'd get nine people coming out to your house and hauling you out if you were that autistic girl, but you can be a big bearded jihadi calling for jihad and the massacre of Jews anywhere in the UK and you're fine. Well, lots of people have noticed that and we do not like it. I couldn't agree with you more and I think an awful lot of people will feel exactly the same way to say all we want is the police and the government and to do if their I could just say... job. In a broader context, it is time that the government put an iron fist on Islam before they overwhelm us. We imported millions of people from backward countries and that's exactly what we're getting. If that had not been the case, these protests of mainly Muslims would not be occurring. Muslim countries don't have pro-Israeli protests because they have not let into their countries Westerners and never will. 
Muslims are hypocrites expecting rights in Western societies they'd never give to Westerners in their countries. And can I just say one other thing very yeah. quickly, Julia? I'm in a country here at the moment, Israel, that is protecting itself and protecting its population. And I don't care to hear all the analysis from armchair pundits and others about what they should do and what they shouldn't. But I have a challenge to the British public on this. Why don't we learn to protect the British people as well? The Israeli government knows how to look after the Israeli people. The British government should know how to look after the British people. They should put us first, not everybody else. That's brilliantly summed up by Douglas. We were never given the chance to vote on whether we wanted our country invaded and changed beyond recognition. We never asked to have our culture, way of life and remarkable history sullied, spat on, forcing us to be ashamed of what our ancestors did. We never asked for hundreds of thousands, if not millions, of illegal immigrants coming here, being housed, schooled and receiving benefits, all ahead of our own people. We don't want Muslims destroying our country with their extreme backwardness, joblessness and constant demands for undeserved respect. Muslims are disliked for the right reasons. It's not hate, but an honest recognition of their zero contribution to the betterment of the UK. A year or two ago, a British teacher showed an image of Muhammad. Again, a British teacher in a British school showed the picture of a slave-owing, warmongering lunatic. There were Muslim men protesting, demanding for his head. So he's had to go into hiding and still is. So the police and media didn't back the teacher. Instead, they allowed these hate-filled foreign men to chase this man and his family out of his home in fear for his life. This is the true face of multiculturalism that the media and government do not want people to see, because if they did, we'd have forced these regressive people out of our country in no time. Fortunately, people are starting to wake up, and hopefully... This madness is going to come to an end because if it doesn't, I can't see the British lion continuing to put up with it. God help those Muslim pedophiles and treacherous politicians when we finally snap because it will not be pretty for any of them. Oh, wow. What an interesting uh, video. I totally relate uh, with the point uh, Douglas have stated. And I believe... Uh, what Douglas always talk about, about multiculturalism. I believe the British people promote freedom of speech. They promote freedom of expression. They promote freedom of religion and they promote freedom of, uh, of speech. And they also promote multiculturalism. And a lot of people have tried to, you know, take advantage of those things or uh, take advantage of those things to go the extra mile and douglas always say the fact that you are living in a society you have no right not to be offended and if you feel offended you have no right to resort to violence if someone is doing something you are not okay with the best way to address such issues is to add is to uh dialogue with the person to get better understanding and we can all tell recently a lot of protests have been going on uh, in UK, not just in UK, in America, in Western countries of people showing their support for uh, the Palestinian people, showing their support for Hamas, which is not right. And that is the point Douglas is trying to address in this video. You have to, if you are in a country, you have to be able to respect the country's culture. You have to be able to respect uh, the country's tradition. You have to be able to respect the country's value system. You don't have to come into a country and you try to impose your own culture, your own belief, your own values on the people. I believe that is not the right thing to do. I think it has gotten to the point whereby uh, the indigenous people have started showing their grievance regarding how they are treated and regarding how immigrants abuse their culture, abuse their tradition, abuse their values. We all understand that uh, immigration uh, can also people coming into a, uh, coming into your country can you know can help to 
increase uh can help to boost your economy and we also understand that if those people integrate effectively into the host country they bring uh, a, a lot of economic benefits but when they fail to integrate they can also cause harm to the host country and there is what is happening currently that Douglas is trying to address uh, in this video. It's okay to voice your grievance. It's okay to try to protest if you are not okay with something. But I think it's wrong for you to choose a day that uh, the British people, a day that is sacred to them, to respect those that have fought for their freedom. It's wrong to choose such days to, to, to do your protest. Because it's just like... You are not acknowledging what they are celebrating in that day. There are other days you can choose to express your grievance. You can choose to engage in a protest instead of choosing a day that is sacred to the British people. I believe that is what Douglas is trying to address in this, trying to address in this video. And currently, a lot of videos have been seen online regarding uh the protests bet uh, the protests between Israel and uh the Hamas in UK I think that there's one video I saw where a police a police lady was violently targeted violently targeted by the protesters and she was bleeding because I believe she was trying to you know maintain peace maintain order so the people protesting we not arm themselves. As a result of as a result of her doing her work, she was totally beaten, which I see that is totally unacceptable. It's okay to disagree. It's okay to disagree, but it's very wrong to approach that in a violent way. I believe that is the fact Douglas is trying to address in this video. Because you coming into a country, you should be able to adjust yourself to accommodate uh, the people's culture, to accommodate the people's belief, to accommodate the people's value system. Instead of coming into a country and demanding for, for rights that you know you cannot demand for those rights in your own country. So I, I see that as totally unacceptable. I've really learned a lot just watching this video and listening to Douglas. So I would also love to hear your comments regarding the point and the facts Douglas have stated. So keep the comments coming. Let's get the conversation rolling. Don't forget, click on the subscribe button. Click on the like button. Do have a nice day.